You want me to put that on my todger? This one's wife. How to solve her awful public image. Hello, I'm H.G. Tudor. Some people might think that this one's wife doesn't realise that she has a terrible public image. That's incorrect. She does know. How does she know? Well, first of all, her advisers will tell her. Those that have been hired to do their job with regard to PR will make it abundantly clear to her that she has an awful public image because she's not liked. Furthermore, we also know that this one's wife regularly has to check what is being stated about her in the press and also on social media. She does so because her narcissism drives her, as a consequence of the need for control, to seek out this information. Thus, she is aware that she is not liked. What she doesn't do, though, is accept that she is not liked. She believes that, as a consequence of hatred that flows from other people, that is the reason why she is not liked. She believes that is the reason why she's unpopular. Bigoted opinions, hatred, racism, misogyny. Because remember, she is the victim, and therefore she cannot be accountable for her own behaviours. It's everybody else's fault. Notwithstanding this unpopularity, which only continues to increase, this one's wife believes that she ought to be popular. She wants people to admire her and to love her, because that is how she sees herself. She wants to correct the imbalance. She wants to ensure that people understand the real her. And if they did, if they accepted her truth, they would come to love her, admire her and adore her. What she doesn't realise is that each time she does something, she just provides more evidence as to support the reasons why people don't like her. This is the eternal problem of the narcissist. She can't understand why people would dislike her. It simply doesn't compute. If you were to sit her down and explain, the reason you're so unpopular is because you tell lies, you play the victim, you revise history, you've smeared the royal family. She just will not be capable of accepting it. Her narcissism will compel her to nullify those threats to control posed by those criticisms by saying, but they were horrible to me, that's why I spoke out. I was a victim of their nastiness. Nobody supported me when I felt suicidal. No matter how many times you point out to her that she's changed versions of events, that she said things that's not true, she is incapable, pathologically incapable of accepting it because the narcissism will not allow the majority truth to penetrate her reality. That's its job as a self-defense mechanism. That's why those of you who have been involved with the narcissist have learnt, undoubtedly to your frustration and cost, that the narcissist will not back down, will not accept what you're saying. And you become exasperated. How can they not see the truth? That's because your truth and the narcissist's truth are two different things. It is the same with this one's wife. Nevertheless, she believes that the world ought to love her. And as part of that process, she has hired a new PR individual. And interestingly, the Telegraph went to a number of PR professionals to ask them how would they solve her appalling public image. Their observations are interesting and provide us with more insight into her narcissism and also how people don't truly understand the nature of what she is. The article by Kate Wills explains, She recently launched her lifestyle brand with 50 jars of strawberry jam. Now this one's wife is hoping that a British PR, who once worked for Haribo, can make her personal brand taste just as sweet. As The Telegraph reported earlier this week, this one's wife and Harry's company, Archwell Foundation, has hired Charlie Gibson as its new Director of Communications. Gibson, who has previously worked for brands such as Mars, Cadbury and Domino's, will serve as the Duke and Duchess of Sussex's main point of contact for all UK and European media. Mark Bukowski, 
the crisis PR consultant, says he's not surprised that the Duchess has taken on an expert in consumer products to help sell her wares like jam, but thinks that rebranding this one's wife to appeal to British audiences is one of the most difficult jobs in PR, second only perhaps to doing PR for Prince Andrew. Gibson, 41, from southwest London, has scrubbed much of his personal history from the internet in recent weeks, including his social media profiles. But he describes himself as a senior PR and event specialist with over 15 years' experience in, commun- in consumer comms. Hiring a new spokesperson in the United Kingdom is all part of Team Sussex's global rebrand, aka Hegan 2.0. In February, they relaunched their website, and in March, the Duchess announced the launch of a long-rumoured lifestyle brand, American Riviera Orchard Retirement Homes. In recent weeks, she has been filming a cooking show for Netflix, and has signed a new podcast deal with Lemonada Media, whose mission is to make life suck less. Harry and this one's wife certainly need a fresh start, having been dumped by Spotify, criticised for their Netflix documentary and languishing in public opinion polls. Numerous employees of the Duke and Duchess quit amid a flurry of NDAs and allegations of bullying Palace staff during her brief time as a working royal, allegations she denied. In January, an Ipsos Mori poll found that only 18.18% of people had a positive opinion of this one's wife, her lowest rating in five years. Thus, for all of the reasons that I have documented in parts passim, This one's wife finds herself in a position of considerable unpopularity with a really negative public image. The question therefore posed by The Telegraph is, what would the PR industry experts advise this one's wife to do next? Natalie Trice states, this one's wife needs to be consistent if she wants to rebrand herself in the United Kingdom. Up until now, she's had a very scatterbrained approach to her output, jumping from a kid's book to a podcast to a lifestyle brand and so on. It doesn't seem very joined up. Now, pausing there, the reason for that scattergun approach is quite simply that she is lazy and her narcissism states, if you can get the prime aims with doing a minimum of effort, then do that. Consistency, longevity with regard to a project isn't what's important to her. Subconsciously, what's important to her is control, fuel, character traits, and residual benefits. And if she can obtain those things by jumping from one project to another, that's what she does. Again, the experts in PR don't realise this about her because they aren't experts in narcissism. The PR expert also explains there's also no consistency in how they want to present themselves as a couple. Are they royals or are they not? Do they want to be in the public eye or do they want privacy? People respond to a consistent narrative, so a more joined up approach on who she is and what her goals are will be the first job. Again, that lack of consistency is a consequence of the way that her narcissism functions. Furthermore, best of luck trying to get her to be consistent, she won't. Her form of narcissism is such that she will remain inconsistent and you're not going to be able to change that. Trice continues by explaining, I don't know who's been advising them up until now, but their strategy seems so all over the place that I wonder if they've been listening to the advice they've been getting. Answer, no. This one's wife is the expert. She knows best. A lot of the stories around them have been very toxic and negative. It's not just the us versus them dynamic that they've set up with the royal family, but also the scraps that have played out with this one's wife's own family and the bullying accusations by some of her staff. There's a lot to unpick and correct, and that takes honesty and guts and patience. If you air your dirty laundry in public, it will take time for it to dry. There's plenty of rebuilding for them to do, but when you think back to the time of their wedding, there was a lot of positive feeling for this one's wife in the United Kingdom, and I think they could harness that again. Well, that's an optimistic approach from that PR expert. Nevertheless, I very much doubt that she could harness that again. Trice continues by explaining she should focus her energy on using her platform. What what is that platform? And the way she's overcome her own negative experiences to help other women. We saw a bit of that with the work she did with SmartWorks Charity and an animal rescue home she opened in the UK recently. But it needs to go beyond just paying lip service to these causes. 
She needs to be seen getting out there, putting the time in and campaigning for issues that matter to her. The point is, no issues actually matter to her because of the superficiality of the way that she functions, because she pursues the prime aims, not the actual campaigns. She doesn't want to do hard work because her narcissism tells her, you are amazing and brilliant and you should be given everything with the minimum of effort. The minimum of effort. She doesn't like other women. Other women are a threat to her. A more intelligent, a more attractive, a more capable woman is viewed as a threat. And therefore, although she talks about wanting to empower females, that's just part of her facade management. Trice concludes by stating, This one's wife has a voice and a platform. What does she want to use it to say? Who is she and what does she really stand for? I don't think anyone knows yet. And hopefully it's more than flogging strawberry jam to rich people. Next up, it's Mark Bukowski's turn. He states, I think we need to see some humility from this one's wife. Well, you'll have a long wait for that, Mr. Bukowski. She'll need to really surprise people if she wants to win them over. She should be led by the examples of some of the people she fell out with in the royal family, such as Princess Anne and Sophie Wessex. Of course, this one's wife won't do what they do because she knows best. They have been able to have a profound influence by working hard under the radar for the courses they believe in. Sometimes less is more. This one's wife seems to be more about the explosion of flashbulbs and grandstanding, absolutely, because that's what enables her to control people and draw fuel, than she is about the soft and gentle touch. If I was advising her, I'd tell her to do some charity work undercover. Then she'd surprise people if the thing she was involved in turned out to be a great success. She needs to build up relationships with key players in the philanthropic arena, not just lean on celebrity friends like Oprah. I'd like to see her build bridges with some of her biggest critics. All sound advice, of course, but completely pointless when applied to the narcissist that is this one's wife. She's not going to turn around the naysayers overnight, but she can demonstrate that all the words lead to good actions and good tasks. Ultimately, I think people are forgiving and Brits live for humility. But this one's wife and Harry won't get far if they carry on peddling their own soft focus, uncritical, highly controlled narrative. I think there's a degree of naivety there to suggest that ultimately they could be forgiven. Both of their behaviour have been such that it's beyond the pale. Bukowski continues by explaining that she's hired Charlie Gibson, who comes from a very big corporate PR background, to counter a lot of the negativity around her. He'll be like a soldier of defence going into battle with the British press and the anti-this-one's-wife rhetoric. But her first mistake is that the hiring of him has become a news story. As a PR, once you're the story, 50% of your power is gone. Now Gibson has to prove to the media that he's going to be able to deliver, both to them and to her. Look at someone like Paddy Harvison, who worked for Charles. He was always very much in the shadows. As soon as people can see the strings being pulled, you're behind. For a rebrand to work, this one's wife has got to totally trust Gibson and believe in him and what he suggests. Some people have PRs who they just want to be yes-men, which of course includes this one's wife. But if this new guy is coming in with tough advice, this one's wife has got to take it. I don't think she should focus on the Invictus Games, which of course, as we all know, she's attempted to make this one's wife games. That's very much Harry's thing, and if it looks as if she's leeching onto that, then people won't like it. She needs her own separate communications team to make her stand out on her own. We need to see a real person behind all the gossip and the headlines. Will the real This One's Wife please stand up? But the point is, there is no real This One's Wife. Because what she does is she attempts to be all things to all people because of the chameleon nature of the narcissist and the absence of a core. Rachel Richardson goes next. She explains, be less American would be the first piece of advice. Actually, it's nothing to do with her being American, and it's everything to do with her being a narcissist. She explains, the second piece of advice she would give would be to find her self-deprecation switch. Well, that's impossible because she doesn't have one, and flip it on. And third, to let her actions speak louder than her words. Again, all sound advice, but utterly inapplicable to the type of narcissist that this one's wife is, because for her, words are easier than actions. Words allow her to get to the prime aims more readily, hence that is what she does. She explains, only then do I think that she stands a chance of winning back the British public after all that's happened since 2020. 
It would be a tough turnaround, but not impossible for a woman of this one's wife's talents. She hasn't got any talents. But she would have to want it to be motivated enough to adjust. That's where I have less faith. The rancor runs deep on both sides of the Atlantic, and I question whether she would even have the desire to try to reconcile with Brits after her experiences in the United Kingdom. But of course, ambition is a powerful motivator. Dialing down her Hollywood ways would be a great start. Less word salads and fewer psychobabble references would go far with plain-speaking Brits who rarely use the words heal or empower. Unfortunately, she's not going to do that because the word salads don't actually come from her Americanism, they come from her narcissism. Shaking off her serious manner would help. The past few years have seen her dwell on the negative experience of royal life. She can't help but do that. It's the victim mentality of her narcissism. And rightly or wrongly, some think of her as a moaner. If she could reveal her sense of humour, well, she can't, she doesn't have one, then she would capture the hearts and minds of humble Brits. Not going to happen. Lastly, this one's wife would be wise to focus on showing us who she is rather than telling us. But again, that's not the case because she has to tell, because she has to control the narrative of what she is for the purposes of a certain control and drawing fuel. That is what she's going to do. That is how she's going to behave. In the last few years, many of her initiatives have been heavily trailed, and she's spoken at length about her causes. If she prioritised action over narrative building, I think she'd be unstoppable and would likely silence many of her critics. Again, potentially sound advice, but inapplicable to this one's wife. She's not going to prioritise action because her narcissism won't let that happen. Furthermore, her behaviour has been so reprehensible that even if she were, and she won't, minded to undertake action rather than words, many people in the United Kingdom still will not change their mind about her. She continues by explaining, if this one's wife could pull off all three, then she could make huge strides, but she's certainly not guaranteed to succeed. If the recent claims from former aide Samantha Cohen blow up, then she'll need more than a few adjustments to rehabilitate her image. Cohen recently confirmed that she had been interviewed as part of a probe into reports this one's wife bullied staff, which has put a spotlight back onto the investigation and its unpublished findings. If the allegations were ultimately found to be true, I don't think even the spin of an industrial PR machine could save her image. The next PR expert to offer observations about how to resolve the awful public image of this one's wife is Abessi Menyando. She explains, This one's wife realised that she needed a UK publicist to read the room. There was an instant backlash to her launching a lifestyle blog when the UK is having a cost of living crisis and two senior royals have cancer. Yes, but also you're failing to pick up on the fact there was a backlash against her because people just don't like her. The timing wasn't as sensitive as it could have been, she writes. She'll need to work on that in the future. I think this one's wife has a good understanding of social media. Her lifestyle brand has gained 600,000 followers very quickly. Again, pausing there, we know that around half of those followers have actually been paid for. Furthermore, 600,000 or 300,000 followers for someone who is globally infamous is pretty piss poor, actually. Nevertheless, Manyando continues by explaining, I'd like to see her be more authentic on it. Well, good luck with that. There's not a shred of authenticity when it comes to this one's wife. The food and cooking is something that feels natural for her. She had a lifestyle blog called The Tig before she met Harry. And rather than such a curated presence... I'd like to see more off-the-cuff, relatable content and her speaking directly to her audience with videos. The problem is, she doesn't do off-the-cuff because she's boring and actually has nothing to say. When she was in the UK, this one's wife was very good at speaking with people on the ground and showing empathy and emotion. Well, this demonstrates that this PR expert really doesn't know what this one's wife is. To really harness her power... She needs to make content that's not so glossy and edited and considered. I'd like to see more of that warm, real side of her. Well, you won't, because it doesn't exist. That's how people make a connection to a personal brand, and that's how you can feel relatable even when you have such a high net worth and status. Kim Kardashian is a master of this. 
When it comes to her podcast, I'd advise this one's wife to champion real people with interesting stories from underrepresented backgrounds rather than just using her celebrity friends. Now, that is good advice, but this one's wife won't do it. Why? Two reasons. One, her narcissism will say, they're not glamorous or interesting enough. I want to be associated with famous people. Two, in order to make the best of those interviews, you've got to have either a skill of being able to read and understand people, or you have emotional empathy. She has neither. She's a terrible interviewer. And therefore, to get the best out of those people and their stories, you need to be a skilled interviewer. And she lacks that. Maniando concludes by stating, the fact is, as a woman of colour in the public eye, this one's wife has faced racism, and there are people who won't accept her no matter what she does. Well, unfortunately, pandering to the race car, there is a mistake by this PR expert. People won't accept her, not to do with the fact of her skin colour, but because of her behaviour. Part of her strategy will need to be filtering out the criticism that's helpful, and the criticism that's coming from those who can't get past her skin colour. Well, this PR expert has made a grave error there by believing that much of the criticism originates in relation to her skin colour. It does not. What you will find there are some interesting observations from PR experts. Note how they all see that she has a terrible reputation. Note that many of them see it as a very difficult challenge to turn it around. But what none of them understand is that various aspects of what they propose will fall on thorny ground because this one's wife is a narcissist. Once again, by understanding what she is, that enables us, through the provision of my insight and expertise, to know that many of the things that have been suggested by these PR experts will simply fail because it will come crashing up against her narcissism. That the various dynamics, strands and facets of her narcissism mean that these suggestions are doomed to failure. This puts you, valuable viewers, in a privileged position to understand and recognise this. It would also aid you if you were advising similar people. A more evolved narcissist would be able to see the value of certain advice and take it on board, because they would be about the bigger picture. Therefore, they would be willing to listen, and they would have the ability, through their more evolved form of narcissism, to take on board the suggestions to get the bigger gain. This one's wife is not able to do that. Her narcissism precludes her from adopting such a position. Thus, Interesting as the observations are for all of those PR experts, they all miss this simple fact. The reason that this one's wife has an appalling public image is because of her narcissism. The reason you will not be able to change her appalling public image is because of her narcissism. The personality disorder that she has is entrenched and pathological. Not only is it not going to change, but it's going to prevent her from effecting any meaningful and permanent change. So those were the observations of the PR experts, but it's well worth a dive below the line, and there are over 1,300 comments on this particular article in the Daily Telegraph. Let's find out what people's reactions are. Do they believe that this is a redeemable situation? Do they think that this one's wife's appalling public image can be altered? Maxwell Edison quotes the comment made by the last PR expert about people not being able to get past their skin colour and states, please don't make this about colour. I think readers' opinions are based on many things, but I don't think colour is up there. This one's wife is the only one who has weaponized her colour. Simon Thurse, Mission Impossible. Putting on one side the fact that she has had, had a she has had a complete charisma bypass and is a very unpleasant, mendacious person. The PR guru, no matter who it is, is up against the irrefutable fact of once a thing is known, it cannot be unknown. The UK and most of the planet are already aware of what this one's wife is. She has demonstrated this by her behaviour. Eric Jacobson, most of us really want to see the back of them and their titles taken away. 
Lorraine Hickson. Why is the last PR guru talking about her colour? How pathetic. This is nothing to do with her colour, but the fact she totally disrespected the Queen and Prince Philip and trashed the royal family, let alone the whole of the United Kingdom. She was loved to begin with and everyone was pleased for Harry, but then she revealed her true self. Bettina Thwaite. I suspect he knows the job is an impossibility. There's no way he can turn a de deeply unpleasant narcissist into someone we might forgive for what she has done and said. Personally, I shall never forgive her and Harry, Harry especially, as they were his grandparents, for making two very old people at the end of their lives somewhat miserable. Jeremy Blair. Her problem is she has no authenticity. A ruthless opportunist and narcissist. Those poor children. Marise Palmer, she could disappear completely from public life forever. That would restore her public image 100% in my book. June Anderson, Gibson has an enormous job ahead of him to turn things around in the UK as to what people think of this one's wife. Cindy Albert, does this one's wife have anyone besides her mother and Harry to lean on? Has she any friends that she hasn't ghosted or walked away from? She just seems so cold, grasping and plastic. It's hard to get beyond that. Donald Morris, how the mighty have fallen. This one's wife has gone from being a possible presidential candidate to producing jam. Ouch. Peter Curiles quotes, a woman of this one's wife's talents? And what are those talents? Day Visitor, the last speaker, Abizi, is so wrong she'll never succeed with this one's wife. The reason people don't like this one's wife is because she's hypocritical and lies. She's also white, so pretending that she's a person of colour isn't going to wash, not unless you're one of her uncritical fans. That is. Merry-go-round. The fundamental problem is that they are both totally boring, untalented, fake, overexposed, nasty, cruel, vindictive, greedy, entitled, arrogant, spoiled, liars, narcissists, disloyal, grifters and charlatans. They are perceived as despicable because they really are loathsome. Peter Murray. The problem is not the public image. The problem is that there is no talent or other attribute on which to create a positive image. This one's wife desperately wants to be important, substantial, remembered, etc. The irony is that the books written about her will be case studies of the impossibility to create something out of nothing. She has no talent. She thinks she can hire a few empty suits from the marketing and product world to create something out of nothing. Being famous because of the person you married is the ultimate nothing. Pretty soon, the lingo for a failed product, movie, TV show will have been to have created a This One's Wife. That will be her legacy. Her name being shorthand for things with no substance that failed terribly. And on and on go the observations. If you have time, I'd encourage you to go to the Telegraph and go through the comments. Because it really does show the force of feeling that exists in that people don't like This One's Wife and nor do they see that ever will her image be rehabilitated. But once again, you get to understand the reason her image is as it is, is because of her narcissism, and the reason that it won't alter is similarly because of her narcissism. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening. <laughs>